Show title. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's okay. I've been called worse. Make him the co-host. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's good. Uh, Howard is the host guest, and I'm the guest host. Mm -hmm. That makes complete sense. <laughs> Have a nice weekend. Uh, yeah. Why don't you take uh, some of those pens out of your pocket because they reflect the light. Mm. Oh, here I can bury this one. How's that? Mm. Oh, in fact, I can put it on the uh, counter. Better. Yeah. So we should take a moment and discuss Kelvin temperature. Yeah. And what it means. Yeah, right, we, we just had a perfect illustration. And, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Here we go. Oh, well, that's something I'll, completely I'll cover. Completely perfect. But I'll, I'll find. The uh, three o'clock block on a given Monday, and guess what? I'm the guest host, and Howard Wig is the host guest. Welcome to your show, Howard. Um, it's great pleasure. Thanks for having me. And you are going to talk today about LEDs, elegant workhorses, and mm -hmm. I guess uh, your title, your tag title, tagline is LEDs can do anything efficiently. But you know, also, I, I just want to say that we have mm -hmm. seen. Some great tech, technological advances on LEDs. Mm -hmm. That's why they're better now than they ever were. Mm -hmm. You sound like you know about Moore's Law. Light-emitting diode. Light-emitting diode. What could that mean in English? That could mean that instead of having your standard light bulb, the incandescent just had a filaments in it, tungsten filaments, and you poured so much electricity in there it created a lot of heat, and the light you were seeing was not much different from a fireplace light. You were just seeing el tungsten elements glowing with heat. In fact, the Latin word for white heat is incandescer. That's, that's, that's deceptive in our time, though, because today we're talking about LEDs. We're talking not about LEDs. Incandescer. The yeah. yeah. So, so, okay, so, you know, what I get about this is, and, and we mm -hmm. use them here. In fact, you and I had a, an in-depth discussion we're, of LEDs here in our studio a We're looking ago. beautiful because of LEDs right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, life is made better by LEDs, for oh, sure. Oh, heavens to I mean, the human, yeah. the human psyche is like dependent on light, uh, and, it, and it goes way back well, to... it works. Uh, yeah. Other animals like light, too. Okay, well, yeah. you know, in the daytime, yeah. you feel this way. In a storm, you feel mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. if, if, the, if it got dark right now outside, mm -hmm. you'd feel a certain way. Yep. I mean, we're dependent on good light, and, and we can emulate that light with LEDs more than incandescera, right? Incandescera, yes. Uh, okay, so what, what we have is that with LEDs today, and I want mm -hmm. to distinguish them from LEDs in the past, mm -hmm. LEDs today, you can... You can dim and increase mm -hmm. uh, the, the brightness of it, mm -hmm. uh, and you can dim and increase the Kelvin temperature of it. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our viewers what all that is about? Sure. Uh, brightness is fairly obvious. If you walk into the Hawaiian sunshine at noon and it's pretty cloudless, you are in a very, very bright light. We measure brightness in foot candles. You're getting about 10,000 foot candles on your face and in your eyes. However, today is totally, totally overcast, utterly cloudy. The light is filtered through those clouds. You're down, quote unquote, to about 3,000 foot candles, which is still plenty. And we recently had a full moon. You go out under a full moon with no cloud cover. And you're getting maybe uh, 40 
or zero foot candles, which because of certain properties that we will discuss, you can still read a newspaper under. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of this, I mean, for a video uh, and photography is totally mm -hmm. relevant. Mm -hmm. We try to express a certain image mm -hmm. in a certain mm -hmm. way, have it communicating mm -hmm. certain, you know, messages mm -hmm. I to love the that viewer. You speak with certainty, sir. But it's, you know, it's yeah. the same thing when you walk into a room because mm -hmm. the lighting is likewise communicating certain messages to you. It's Absolutely. making you feel a certain way. I am certain of that, yes. Yeah. So when you walked into an old-fashioned LED lit room, you said, Ew, glary, Ew, I don't like this light, too bright. And what you meant was that there was too much blue in the light. The more we have RBG, which is not Ruth Bader Ginsburg, it's red, blue, green. Those are the three primary colors that our human eye sees with. And all other colors are just a mix of RBG. And in the old-fashioned LEDs were way over on the blue end of the spectrum, which we perceive as white light, very glary. Outside light. Uh, no. High temperature blue is outside, right? Uh, no, because the sunlight, this is something different now, is in degrees Kelvin is about 6,500. And the LEDs you had in this studio previously were about 6,500, the old ones. So it was, you can do anything you, you can mix and match anything you want now. But in the early pioneering days of LEDs, you had too much blue, which number one looked glary, number two washed out our flesh tones. Regardless of what color skin we have, there's a lot of red in there, and it would wash out the red, and our skin would look pretty gosh darn gray. Let's and look at each other, Howard. Sickly. Okay, so mm -hmm. you, is your skin tone washed out in any way? What, uh, yeah, it what is. What is the LED doing to your skin tone right now? Right now, it's pretty good. If, if we took it, this, these are 3,200 degrees Kelvin. If we took that down to 2,700, which is the old incandescent light degrees, I would look uh, more glowing with health. But uh, on the other hand, due, due to your uh, very strict regime, health regime, you, you just look glowy, glowing anyway yourself. Uh, but yeah, some, thank somehow you. I'm, thank I'm you for getting that. washed yeah. out here. Okay, we had enough of that then. <laughs> so <laughs> so let's, talk, let's talk about Kelvin for a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, what is Kelvin? I, I okay. remember they had a thing called a Kelvinator. It was a refrigerator back when? Uh, no, that, that was the Kel Kelvinator. That was named after my great-great-great-grandfather, John Kelvert. You invented have a that, very yeah. extended family. Yes. Yeah. So degrees Kelvin were, was come up with uh, by Lord Kelvin in 1845 in London. And he observed that London was, or England was really getting into its full tilt industrial revolution now, and they worked with steel a lot. And he noted that a steel bar that, say, came out of a campfire would glow pretty red, but if you went into an industrial facility and heated it up even more, the red would go to orange, then to yellow, then to light green, then to dark green, and all the way to blue, a red hot iron bar was not red, that's low temperatures, but blue. And he devised a measuring scheme, and they uh, named the measuring scheme after him, hence degrees Kelvin. And the redder something is the lower the degrees Kelvin because actually in physical temperature, the lower it is. Again, you put a steel bar into a campfire and it'll be red. Put it in an industrial facility, it'll turn everything all the way up to blue. So something red on the mm -hmm. Kelvin scale mm -hmm. or, or that has more red in it, mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily hotter. It's oh. actually cooler. Cooler, yep. Than yep. something at the top of the Kelvin scale, mm -hmm. which would be blue, white, blue. Mm -hmm. And I thought that white, blue emulates outside, you know, natural light outside uh, and 
And uh, red and orange is uh, lower, lower uh, Kelvin temperature represents mm. uh, inside, warmer, uh, deeper okay. colors. Now, yeah. now you're getting into something else, which is the fact that when you get into colors, the reds have longer wavelengths, the blues have shorter wavelengths, and incidentally, if you go beyond the blue to shorter and shorter wavelengths, you get to ultraviolet, which has not done my skin a whole lot of uh, favors. And if ultraviolet comes through a window and hits your furniture or your rug, it fades. It's because those tiny, tiny little bits of radiation are actually doing harm. Mm -hmm. Like they're biting into my skin, get a little bit shorter in wavelength, and you have x-rays which are not so good for our health, and you go shortest and you get gamma rays. So the technology mm -hmm. as it exists today, you can adjust all that. Mm -hmm. Adjust uh, it you, down to a fine, fine, fine tune, yeah. yeah. Mi but, mix and match with the RBG anything you want with the LEDs. That's one of their great, great, great virtues. So is it, is it that today, you know, given the mm, lighting equipment that I can buy, mm -hmm. that I can change the uh, Kelvin temperature in a room as well as the light brightness in the room. Absolutely. And I can create a, yeah. a, 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 a tone in the room, a, yeah. a yeah. feeling in the room, mm -hmm. and then I can change it at will anytime. Absolutely. Uh, nightclubs have done this to a great extent and high-end restaurants. At a, at, if people come in at 5 in the afternoon, you want a certain degrees Kelvin and a certain level of illumination. And then, say, as a, a later at night, you want to go down on those things, you want to get warmer, you want to get more romantic. Generally, the lower the degrees Kelvin, the better we look, and that low light level uh, lends itself to romanticism. On the other hand, if you want people to be really bright and really alert, then you put a lot of blue into your light. Oh, which... Uh, Raises the Kelvin. Yeah. It seg segues into uh, school rooms, what they're doing now with LEDs in classrooms, is <clears throat> teenagers' circadian rhythm is not suited to sitting at your desk at 8 in the morning. Teenagers automatically stay up till 1, 2 in the morning. It's just their shifting circadian rhythm. And we can go, well, we won't go into the uh, probable reasons for that, but they're staring foggy-brained at their pieces of paper at 8 in the morning Therefore, you tune the classroom lighting to a lot of blue. It alerts them. They do better work then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, their, their productivity goes up, their alertness goes up, everything goes up. And then if you, oh, on the other hand, if you have hyperactive kindergartners, they're running all over the place, you tune, you dial down, 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 till the light is emanating a soft, warm glow, and the kids calm Slow down. Slow them down. Yeah. Make them more romantic, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, so uh, you can change a person's mood this way. Oh, heavens to Betsy, yes. Yeah, the, uh, uh, in uh, retirement homes, they're doing this a lot because the people are inside almost all the time, and they lose track of time. So you emulate the diurnal schedule with the warm uh, early morning sun, and then you shift it to blue, and then when you want them to relax, you start getting redder and redder light. You know, we have the ability to do that electronically, too. And oh, oh, it, it, it's all programmable. Yeah, and Rob, yeah. Rob McLean is, um, you know, on the, on the vMix uh, switching machine now. And I wonder if he, he could demonstrate to us, uh, going into this break, we're about to take a break, mm -hmm. how we really get warm and romantic. Can you do that, Rob? Make, make it happen to me. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> now we'll take a break. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. We haven't gotten started yet, though, but we'll, we'll get there. Oh, oh, you're going to get it too, Howard. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Look even, better, look even better. Look even better. See what we can do here mm -hmm. in Think Tech. Yeah, yeah. Aloha. I'm Stan Osterman, a host here on Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo.
Aloha, I'm Jane Sugimura, host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thank you so much. Okay, Code Green with me, Jay Fidel, and Howard Wig. He's the uh, guest host, host guest, mm -hmm. whatever he is. Okay, we got some pictures to show what we were discussing about rooms and how you can make a, a room feel so good. And that means all rooms. So well, LEDs are really, ah, God, they have a huge effect on our lives. Mm -hmm. Let's see what some of them look like. Howard, yeah. why don't you describe okay. them? And a little background, these slides are from John Okuma, who is the president of Pioneer Electric out in Kalihi. He was supposed to be my guest. He notified me this morning. I've got a terrible, terrible flu. I can barely function. I don't want to spread the germs around. So I am sitting in for John Okuma. And he sent me a whole, he's an electric company, and they do the design and installation of different uh, lighting projects. So, and each, what we're gonna illustrate is there's different requirements for every lighting lit environment. Here, obviously, is a boardroom. What you want is a soft, dignified, civilized air about the boardroom. And your primary task area is, of course, the table. So you want that well illuminated. And note that around the boardroom, it's not as well illuminated. And then on the far wall there, there's the subtask. You might have papers there in preparation for the meeting that people are to pick up. So you want that well illuminated. And then, of course, you want dimming capability, which LEDs do beautifully, because you want to maybe dim down and have a PowerPoint or, or a video on the screen. And this, and this also <clears throat> raises uh, a third variable factor, mm -hmm. which is uh, sharp light, you know, focused light mm -hmm. or diffused light. Mm -hmm. Seems mm -hmm. to me that photograph, that boardroom shows a certain amount of diffusion. It yep. makes it more comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not as hard on the eye. Precisely. Am I right? Yeah. The, the light levels are pretty gosh darn low, except right on the table, because if everybody's sitting around reading things, and they're at the table. That's where you want kind of a sharp light, but the rest of the room can be a, a diffused, uh, softer light. Hmm. We learn. Yeah. So how about, about the next picture? How about the next we picture? We've got some really wonderful pictures here. This is a very exotic uh, space, namely a warehouse. What you want here is quite the opposite. You're going to be bringing forklifts in here, and you want a really sharp, light. So these are very, very high degree Kelvin lights. Kind of, It's okay that they're glary because safety first here. I've been in areas where there's forklifts zooming around and you want to see, I want the forklift guy to see me very, very clearly and he wants to see his goods very, very clearly. And it's tricky because you also want the shelving to be well illuminated. You want to head of him see what's going on on the bottom shelf in addition to the top shelf. And that takes very, very specialized... You don't want stuff. shadows in those areas. No, no, because then he's going to say, what in the heck is that down there? And that's going to take up extra time. What about the uh, sharp versus diffusion? Do you want it all sharp here? In this case, yeah, you, you want it all, all sharp, yeah. Hmm. So these are very, very high uh, efficacy lamps. You're getting a... Uh, because you don't care about us human beings' appearance. You care about visual acuity. So you can dial up the blue in the light. The more blue is in the light, the higher the uh, luminous efficacy. That's a good and phrase the acuity, for you. Yeah. And meaning the lights give off a lot of miles per gallon. So yeah. that's, yeah. It maybe. would be harder to get around with the forklift and all that in, in, a, in a space like this mm -hmm. if you lowered the brightness, Pre if you increased the diffusion, 
Mm -hmm. um, and if you, of course, if you uh, lowered the temperature, it would be romantic, the, but not efficient. Yes, you, you're getting it. You're getting it very yeah. good. Maybe yeah. even a little dangerous, actually. A little dangerous. I don't want to argue with a forklift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll be on the final exam. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about so, our next picture? Excellent. Okay, here's another exotic application. This has to do with uh, outdoor light. And number one, you want to be taking advantage of what's called the spill light. You see the, uh, the bay area there where the trucks pull in and out. You want a lot of light there because you want the truck driver and whoever else is working there to see exactly what they're doing. And this is another high degrees Kelvin application, by the way. And then you want as much of the light that's in there to spill out to the exterior because this looks pretty placid right now, but imagine there's trucks going in and out, in and out all the time. At night, you want them to be able to see one another really, really clearly. At two trucks colliding, that's, that's, uh, that's some wasted uh, money there. Yeah. And what about the shadow on the, this side of the truck? Yeah. I mean, is that, I, that's not optimal. Uh, ideally, you would have uh, some other lights behind the truck, just to the right of the truck. That would... Yep. Uh, that would brighten up that shadow. We're going to hire you as a lighting consultant pretty <laughs> quickly here because what I would have done differently, two things with these outdoor fixtures that you see, is number one, I would have raised them way up to what's called high bay applications. And the higher the light and the stronger coming down, the more uniform is the light and you don't create shadows like that. Number two objection to these outdoor lights is that they, some of the light is going up. You do not want to go up. We have an astronomy, a bunch of astronomy facilities on Mauna Kea. They do not like up light. And Why especially Because it bounces down again? Uh, it dif diffuses upwards, and there's something called the Rayleigh scattering effect, which we can go into it at some other uh, time. So you'd have a reflector over the light. Yeah. Reflect and get it, it down. And yeah, and you can build that into the LED luminaires, the, the housing for the uh, LEDs. You can get it all down. We're putting uh, new street lights up for both the city and the state. And one of the specifications is full cutoff. No up light, no side light, all down light. Mm -hmm. And that uh, certainly increases the efficacy also because you have no use for light going up there. You want it all down. Before we leave this, that photo, why don't we go back to it for just a moment. <clears throat> you know, it strikes me from this photo that those lights um, actually bring up the general illumination of the area. Mm -hmm. Almost like this, this, this scene is mm -hmm. happening at, at sunset or even, mm -hmm. uh, even just after sunset, maybe. Yep. Um, this makes it look like the daytime. Well, here's another lighting design application, uniformity. Ideally, you want the amount of light that's hitting your task. In this case, your task is actually the, the pavement. You want it to be exactly uniform. 15-foot yeah. candles here, 15-foot candles over there. And it's almost impossible to design uh, artificial lighting like that. But the better uniformity you have, the greater and the more it looks like uh, sunlight. And the safer it is, our eyes don't have to adjust up and down, up and down to dim light, bright light, dim light, bright light. Yeah. So that's a very yeah. acute observation. Strikes me, uh, strikes me this, though, in, in the 21st century here mm -hmm. in 2019, I, will ha I would have a little panel inside that building mm -hmm. about, you know, what, a foot by a foot maybe. Mm -hmm. And I would have or maybe just on a computer screen. And I would be able to set that light mm -hmm. in a way uh, that achieves a certain result. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't be talking necessarily about Kelvin or about mm -hmm. brightness. It would say, um, you know, make, make, me, uh, make me comfortable for, um, for trucks coming and going, or mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that, uh, and push a button, and now everything is adjusted mm -hmm. uh, automatically. Is this happening? The, those are called controls. And the easiest, simplest control is something we're familiar with, namely motion sensors. In this case, say at 7 in the evening, you might have trucks coming and going like mad, so you want a high level of illumination. 
say at 9, things are slowing way, 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 way down. By 10, this area is off. Therefore, you can have maybe a couple little emergency lights here and there. And everything is dark until motion is detected. What is somebody doing there after 10 at night when they shouldn't be there? The security is alerted, and you can see it on the cameras. Hey, why is that uh, light coming it's on? It's an alarm system. Sudden? Yeah. Or if the police are coming by and they know that it should be dark after 10, why is that up there? Oh, that's great that yeah. this is happening. Con controls are better, 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 and cheaper than they were now. And save money, because if you're not yep. using mm -hmm. as much light at a time mm -hmm. when uh, you know, it's, it's quiet in the lot, mm -hmm. uh, you're actually saving money the, on electricity. The most efficient setting for a light is off. <laughs> this is definitely going to be on the final exam. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, what I hear you say, though, is that LEDs, we, if we didn't mm -hmm. mention it, LEDs, like in our studio here, there's no temperature at all. I mean, no physical temperature. Uh, they're, they're not quite true. There's well, a teeny just, little bit of they're temperature. Not hot. They're not yeah. hot. Yeah. They're, they're almost cool. Yeah. And, and yeah. so it's not uncomfortable in any way. And, and then I ask you, what is the implications for your uh, air conditioning load? Minimal. Minimal. You can crank down your air conditioning. Right. That's another advantage to LEDs. So I'm yeah. using less electricity, mm -hmm. and I'm using less air conditioning. Precisely. This is very valuable. And you're comfortable, and you, and you look good. And it, yeah. yeah, that too. You too. Yeah. Now, if I was using um, incandescia, incandescia, what was it? Incandescer. Incandescera. It would be way warmer. Yeah, we, we, if we had this much them. illumination, we would be sweating. Yeah, we would. And the air conditioning would be cranked to the max and still not doing the job. We'd still feel that radiant heat. Okay, pick a last video, a last okay, uh, photo. Okay, we need Howard. another slide, please. Ah, uh, aesthetics also. This is obviously a residence. And this lighting has two purposes. Number one... If you are entertaining at night, this is obviously a very good area for people uh, congregating. You can have your barbecue, your cooler and everything be very nicely illuminated. Number two, well, you want safety also. People are wandering around on these paths. You don't want them stumbling over anything. And number three, security. Again, I go back to motion sensors. If at night you can turn everything totally off, until there's a motion of something. And the disadvantage here is that uh, it could be a dog or a cat. I have cats at my house. We have motion sensors. And light goes on. Oh, yeah, there's, uh, there's Walter, the cat, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but, you have to, you know, make the sensor work on mass, right? Mm -hmm. You can do that with alarm systems. Yeah. Likewise, yeah, you, you can make you could, a, yeah. do that you can with say lights. only... Volumes greater than X, and it, pick, pick out a, a kid. You know, it has to be bigger than, than a kid. Yeah. So Walter could walk all around and not yeah. trigger anything. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm, I really hate to say this because I've enjoyed the show a lot, mm -hmm. uh, Howard. But we're out of time, and I, I, before I offer you the opportunity to leave a, a, a host message, mm -hmm. or maybe a, ho a guest host message mm -hmm. uh, with them, I, I just want to say that this discussion has been more than anything; it has been enlightening. How about illuminating? That too. Mm -hmm. What would you like to leave with the people? Uh, if we could dial up the last slide with the uh, Pioneer Electric. Yeah, there, there we go. Thanks to John Okuma, who couldn't make it, of uh, Pioneer Electric. And he did, we haven't seen all the slides, but whatever he does, whatever application it is, he did a really good job in terms of safety, efficiency, and matching the lighting to that particular task. As you can tell, it's a really fine art. Yes, it is. And yeah. it's great to have these possibilities available for us. Mm -hmm. They change the quality of our life. Thank you much, Howard. My great to have pleasure. you here on your show. Great to be on my show. Yes, yes. illuminating indeed. Mm -hmm. Aloha. Aloha.